Hello and welcome to the Stephanie Herman Show. During this time of shelter in place and COVID-19, a lot of us are having to eat at home. And what my husband, Chef Rich, decided to do was to really make everything we eat at home fabulous. And because I thought everything was so fabulous, I wanted to share it with you. So tonight, Chef Rich will be showing us how to make the perfect steak. And I would like to introduce you to my husband, Chef Rich. Tonight's episode is cooking the perfect steak. It's not magic. It's something anyone can do at home. So why go out to a restaurant and pay an exorbitant price for it when you could do the same thing yourself for a whole lot less and get just as much enjoyment? The reason steaks are so expensive in a restaurant is that it, a good steak is a very expensive ingredient. But if you're armed with a little bit of knowledge, you can get the same ingredients yourself and knowing how to cook it just right you can come up with a result that's just as good as you get in a restaurant. And that's exactly what we're going to show you how to do tonight. So here we have a beautifully marbled ribeye steak. Very appropriate for pan frying, which is how we're going to fix it tonight. But you could also do a New York steak, which is also delicious. Look at all the nice fat marbling through that steak. You want to choose a steak with a whole lot of fat running through it because that's where all the flavor and tenderness comes from. The one that's best marbled is usually the one I'll buy. This was a USDA choice cut at Piazza's, but probably in most markets that's going to be prime. What I like to do is to take the steak out of the, out of the refrigerator for a couple of hours so that it warms up to room temperature. And the first thing you need to do is to uh, dry it out so that there's no moisture on top of it. How do you dry it out, Chef Rich? Just with paper towel, pat it dry. Okay. You want to keep the meat dry so that it sears nicely on a cast iron skillet or uh, any other large skillet that you might have. So while the pan's heating up, we're going to use a product that's called a fry wool, which is a big piece of silicone. This is great because if you're frying things that sizzle like steak, they keep your stove clean and your clothes clean. Generally, I just use salt. And what kind of salt is that? This is kosher salt and I salt it pretty heavily. So we salt it one side, flip it over, salt it again. And I'm gonna rub this in a little bit. And generally I don't use pepper because when you pan fry it, the pepper gets burnt and you don't really taste it. So let's check it out and see how that skillet's doing, if we're getting some smoke happening from it. And yep, that looks like it's getting really hot. And you can see the smoke is just starting to come from the pan. There should be some music with that smoke. Well, there's going to be some music in just a minute. We're going to put the fan <laughs> on fan so that you don't smoke us out of here. So I see you're very particular about the pan you're using here. Tell us more about it. This happens to be an eight inch cast iron skillet. I've got bigger skillets uh, up to 12 inches, which I use for my family when cooking three steaks. But this little guy is gonna be just fine for cooking a single steak. Cast iron's great material because it distributes the heat very, very evenly. It's very, very porous. So it tends to absorb the oil and season the pan and become nicely non-stick. So that steak's going to fry up, get very crisp on the outside, and release really well without leaving any residue when we take it out of the pan. But a word of caution when cleaning cast iron, never use soap, because the soap will impregnate the pan and impart its soapy taste to any food that you're using after you've used that soap. So just use water and dry it immediately afterwards. And how long should you wait before you flip it? Generally three to five minutes per side, depending on the thickness of the steak. But if it's a really thick steak, um, probably, probably flip it about the same amount of time, but you may have to flip it more than once, maybe uh, two or three times. Ooh, 
Logan. Tell us more about that thermometer. I've never seen that before, or I have. I don't think our audience has. <laughs> so this is an instant read thermometer, but it's not just an instant read thermometer. It's a Cooper Atkins, which I've found through the years to be the most reliable. It also has a really narrow tip at the very end of it. And that's very important because you don't want a big hole in the meat when you take the temperature. How deep do you stick that thermometer into that meat? <laughs> you want to put the thermometer about halfway through the thickness at its thickest point so that you get the coldest part of the steak. It should register about 110 degrees. One thing you really want to be careful of is not to exceed the thin portion of the thermometer because you don't want to poke a big diameter hole in for the juices to run out and bleed the steak dry. This is my basic kitchen knife. We cook. It's made in Japan in a factory that used to make samurai swords. And the name of the knife is uh, Kai Shun. It's um, an eight inch chef's knife. And it's made of many layers of steel. The innermost layer, which is very, very hard. So it keeps its edge really well. And it's clad with stainless steel, so it doesn't rust. This is a great knife. It feels really good in the hand. It's really my all purpose kitchen knife. Putting some juice on. A uh, juice. Au jus. Au jus. Let's not waste what we got on the board. Can also put that to some good use. Tonight we're going to serve this steak with a watercress salad, something very, very simple. We've got some beautiful fresh watercress, which we're going to serve with a teaspoon of uh, squeezed Myers lemon, which we got from our backyard. And the way that I make the salad is I just mix in one ingredient at a time. So we're going to start with the lemon and get that combined. And this is great watercress that I don't want to ruin. So instead of using a utensil, I'm actually mixing it by hand. It's really cool. I like mixing it by hand too, so you can really feel where the lemon goes, make sure exactly. it's evenly distributed. A little bit of oil. What's your favorite olive oil? A good extra virgin Italian. And this happens to be Paterna which I got on Amazon and it's 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 a it's a very good olive oil it's not super top of the line but I think it's a really nice general purpose oil and it's good price and it's very good price it's like 100 ounces for $40 now there are a lot of YouTube videos that will have you put a bunch of butter and garlic and seasoning with the steak. I don't really think you need all that seasoning for the great steak. So you could put pepper on at the end, right? And pepper definitely should go on at the end. Thank you for reminding me. I almost forgot. They're so good. Good job. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us with the Stephanie Herman Show and hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye for now.